<coughs> Mr. Speaker, let me begin by commending Chairman Upton, Chairman Whitfield, Ranking Member Pallone, and the committee staff for working with my office to bring the 21st century workforce legislation to the House floor today. I will also publicly acknowledge the leadership of my colleague, Mr. Hudson of North Carolina, and his staff, who played an instrumental role in helping us to get to this very point. The good faith talk held between my office, the majority, and the minority committee staff, and Mr. Hudson's office, have resulted in this bipartisan jobs bill that will go a long way in helping to get our nation's economy back on track and working for everyone. Mr. Speaker, this workforce bill before us provides an example of how Congress should function, how Congress should work on behalf of the American people. Here we have bipartisan members of the Energy and Commerce Committee who represent various constituencies from diverse regions of the country and who come with different political persuasions. However, Mr. Speaker, it must be well noted that we were able to put aside our differences and focus our efforts on bringing forth a jobs bill that will benefit all of our nation's communities and help lift up the entire American economy. And exactly what this, does this bill do, Mr. Speaker? Well, this bill directs the Secretary of Energy to prioritize the training of underrepresented groups, including minorities, women, veterans, as well as displaced and unemployed energy and manufacturing workers in order to increase the number of skilled candidates trained to work in these same related fields. Mr. Speaker, this bill will strengthen and more fully engage DOE's programs and national laboratories in order to carry out the department's workforce development initiative. That includes the Minorities and Energy Initiative that was established two years ago with my encouragement under Secretary Moniz's leadership. There will be a clearinghouse of information and resources on training and workforce development programs for energy and manufacturing-related jobs, state by state, region by region, all across our nation. Mr. Speaker, this bill will help increase outreach to minority-serving institutions to ensure that the wealth of, these exist of the existing resources at DOE are made available to these worthy establishment. It will also provide additional outreach <clears throat> to displaced and unemployed energy and manufacturing workers with the objective of improving the opportunities for these candidates to find employment. This legislation, Mr. Speaker, will help to develop a skilled labor force trained to work in a wide array of sectors, 
including renewables, energy efficiency, oil and gas, coal, nuclear, utility, pipelines, alternative fuels, as well as intensive energy and advanced manufacturing industry. Mr. Speaker, one of the challenges that I have heard far too many times for my constituents are of individuals participating in training programs that in many cases do not, all, do not always lead to actually finding a job. With that in mind, Mr. Speaker, this bill will help industry, help schools, and help community-based workforce development organizations to identify candidates for enrollment into training and apprenticeship program with the objective of ensuring that the skills learned are immediately transferable to good paying jobs, good paying careers within the energy and manufacturing sectors, regionally, nationally, and indeed all across this globe. Mr. Speaker, as you well know, as all members of this House know, the energy and manufacturing industries are two of the most critical and fastest growing sectors, both domestically as well as internationally. The potential of these two sectors can help bolster the American economy and are also vital to the growing number of people seeking middle class status all across the developing world. It is important, Mr. Speaker, that we equip our citizens, those who are need jobs, those who are out of work, we equip our citizens with the skills needed and necessary to meet this growing demand so that we can tap into these tremendous opportunities. And this very bill before us today will accomplish that goal. And why is the 21st century workforce bill so very necessary? Well, Mr. Speaker, just last week, my office had yet another visiting delegation, a meeting this time with an energy company out in the great state of North Carolina, whose representative informed me, uh, informed me that right now, today, as we stand here in this great chamber today, they have over a thousand jobs openings that they cannot fill because they cannot find enough qualified skilled workers. The 21st century workforce bill will address that difficulty and be a solution to that and many other similar problems all across our country. In fact, Mr. Speaker, my office has been holding many of these same types of meetings over the past four years with a variety of different energy and manufacturing industries that are indeed facing this very same predicament. At a time when African American and Latino unemployment rates are still too high, when coal workers throughout Appalachia and beyond are finding themselves without work, when too many female heads of households cannot find adequate employment to take care of their families, when veterans returning home from defending our nation still cannot find a job, it is a travesty 
and a shame that eager employers still cannot find the trained workers they need. Mr. Speaker, this is a common sense jobs bill that will help to match up trained, qualified candidates with good paying jobs and careers that will fit them, their families, and help lift up their communities, help strengthen the energy and manufacturing industries, and will bolster the entire American economy as a whole. Whether you're a student pursuing your engineering degree at an HBCU, or a single mother taking classes at your neighborhood community college, this bill seeks to provide additional opportunity to all those individuals who are out there looking to better themselves and improve the situation, the financial situation for their families. Mr. Speaker, when this bill becomes law and, it, and its provisions are implemented, it would help out of work coal miners retool and retrain for the jobs of the 21st century. This bill will also help returning veterans use their skills, use their talents to find employment and provide a dignified future for their families. So, Mr. Speaker, again, I want to thank my distinguished colleague from the great state of Kentucky, of, from Michigan, Mr. Chairman Upton, my friend from the great state of Kentucky, Chairman Whitfield, Ranking Member Pallone, my friend from North Carolina, Mr. Hudson, and all, and all my colleagues on the Energy and Commerce Committee, as well as those who are on the Education and Workforce Committee, who helped bring us to this point today where we bring forward this bill today, with its focus not only on underserved communities, such as minorities, women, and veterans, but also on displaced and unemployed coal miners and out of work uh, energy workers in other places. I can assure you, Mr. Speaker, when that when this bill ultimately becomes law, it will go a long way in helping not only communities that look like the one I represent on the south side of Chicago, but every, every, every community and every, every district throughout this nation. Mr. Speaker, with that, I reserve the balance of my time. The gentleman from